Uh, all right, NFL stuff with John. All guests appear via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. He is with us now on the Sports Pass. John, how are you? Doing well, guys. You're burying the lead there. The important part is Philadelphia teams don't lose now. That's right. So that's all that matters. Philly teams don't lose. The Sixers are unbeaten since the Super Bowl. The Flyers haven't lost since the Super Bowl. Um, and now the Phillies haven't lost. This is unbelievable. What a time. Dominating the University of Tampa. <laughs> hey, a couple of years ago, they lost that game. Um, let's get into your story at 973ESPN.com, where you write that Doug Peterson basically squashed any quarterback controversy. I don't know that there was one, but yes, there are people out there that think, hey, Nick Foles should be the guy. He was the MVP of the Super Bowl. Uh, give us a little insight on what Peterson said to kind of dispel those rumors. Yeah, he, for the first time, uh, and, and it was understandable after the Super Bowl because you wanted to let Nick Foles have his moment, and I wrote about that at the time. That was not the time to go up there and say Carson Wentz was a starring quarterback, but uh, Doug was on the Rich Eisen show this morning, and he called uh, Nick Foles the backup quarterback. And, and it shouldn't be a surprise, but it is a surprise to a certain group of people. I would say a small minority who didn't realize. But when I mentioned it on the show yesterday, I got quite a few comments on Twitter. So some people are shocked by this. I, I don't know how. Did they not pay attention uh, to the first 13, 14, you know, 13 plus games Carson Wentz played uh, to think that he wouldn't be the starting quarterback of this team when he was healthy. But evidently there's those people that are out there. Oh, yeah. I had people uh, tweeting at me that said that Peterson should announce that Foles is the starter now until <laughs> Wentz is healthy enough and ready to play. And there's a lot of people, you know, John, I don't know if you have any more information regarding Wentz's injury, but, you know, there is some people that think it's worse than it was originally. We kind of touched on this yesterday, but Josh was telling me that some people that equated to around what Robert Griffin III went through. Yeah, it's not quite the same. It's the same injury because they both tore uh, ACLs and LCLs. Uh, uh, Robert Griffin III had far more serious surgery uh, of full reconstruction than, than Carson had, which was just a repair. So I think that's the key in the difference. But uh, I kind of mentioned on the show yesterday when Carson said it, it didn't affect uh, the timetable. According to doctors I've talked to, it does affect it. And it turns uh, a six to nine month injury into a nine to 12 month injury when you have to rehab both of those ligaments. So there is a little bit of a difference. He also got a little meniscus repair, although that doesn't really change things that much. But it's a very serious injury. There's no question about it. I, but it's all semantics. I mean, Nick Foles is the starter until Carson Wentz is healthy. Everybody knows that. Uh, I mean, uh, the only reason the Eagles are contemplating keeping Nick Foles around is the, po the potential, at least, that Carson won't be ready for the start of the season. That's the only reason you even give lip service to keeping him around. Otherwise, you peddle him and, and trade him for as much as you possibly can. So uh, that part of it is, isn't really meaningful. Uh, but for the people who think there should be some kind of quarterback controversy, A, there shouldn't, and B, there isn't. John, in the times that we've seen Carson Wentz since the injury, does he appear to be ahead of schedule, on schedule? Because I know there's, I mean, it's like uh, breaking down what size boot he's wearing. There's a lot of scrutiny of Carson Wentz every time that you do get eyeballs on him. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's tough. You know, I just go by how hard he works. So... I kind of know he's going to be ahead of any schedule that's typical or described as average. Uh, he's going to be he's going to be ahead of that. That's just the kind of person he is. He's going to do more work than he has to. He's going to do it uh, uh, at a faster level. And he's always going to push. Uh, so from that standpoint, I don't think you have to worry about it. Um, all indications from everyone that spoke, including Carson himself. Uh, he's he's making significant progress. He admitted it's difficult. It's always mm -hmm. difficult. 
Uh, it's painful injury, obviously, after the surgery. Um, and I, I think always with ACL operations, it's it's more about the mental hurdle than the physical hurdle. They can repair it. And they've they've uh, improved enough enough from a medical standpoint that you know it's going to be well done uh, in the surgery from the surgery aspect. Uh, but the mental hurdle is always a significant one for any athlete. And as for uh, Peterson's comments to Rich Eisen, do you think uh, Foles even batted an eyelash at that, or did he already feel like, he, you know, well, yeah, sure, that makes sense to me. Yeah. No, yeah, I mean, Nick has admitted it. I, I mean, Nick is not one pushing the agenda that there should be a quarterback controversy. Nick has always deferred to Carson Wentz, uh, continued to defer to Carson Wentz, really, even after winning the Super Bowl. Uh, he understands this is his team, uh, and that's how it's going to remain. The only question is, you know, how much does Nick want to be a starter in this league this season? Uh, and if he does, um, and, he, and if he pushes for that, perhaps that could speed up a trade. Uh, but the only way he's going to be the full-time starter here is if something drastic you know, goes in the drastic direction as far as Carson Wentz itself. I thought uh, the interesting comments from that interview as well were that Peterson said, I truly believe if he's healthy, I still feel strongly that he would probably be the, uh, we would be in the Super Bowl, win the Super Bowl with Carson, and he's the MVP. That's just the way he played last year. So essentially he's saying that, uh, yeah, he would have been the MVP of the Super Bowl, we would have made it to the Super Bowl, and all would have been the same, which I think most normalized brains would probably think the same way, but that goes back to the Polian comment of Foles is looked at as an icon because he was able to do something that people view that nobody else could do, possibly including Carson Wentz. Yeah, I mean, he did it. That's the reality. I, I mean, I, I we talked about a lot. The hurdle to get to the Super Bowl is much easier, and, and I mentioned in the piece, if you think about it, uh, the underdog narrative that, that was such embraced by the Eagles themselves and also the fan base, that doesn't exist if Carson Wentz doesn't get hurt because they're significant, significant favorites over Atlanta and Minnesota in the playoffs if Carson Wentz is there. So you don't have that underdog aspect, which was a key part of fueling this team. They probably would have been underdogs in the Super Bowl, uh, but it wouldn't have been pervasive throughout the playoffs. Uh, and then the second part, which I've talked about a lot, and, and I've said it, you know, I, I would have voted for Carson Wentz as the MVP of this league at, at week 14. I think he would have been the MVP of this league. Uh, and while I say that, I don't think he could have played as well against both the Vikings and the Patriots as Nick Foles did. I, I don't think he could play much better than Nick Foles did against Minnesota and New England. So he got hot at exactly the right time. Um, but again, there's a difference from getting hot over a two-game stretch than doing it consistently for 16 weeks of the season. And anybody who thinks Nick Foles is on Carson Wentz's level, I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, it it's not close. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, John, because uh, that that's what I want to ask you about is some of the people that are out there thinking the Eagles can get – high draft picks if they do offer Nick Foles and somebody's going to give, you know, the Bill Polian stuff is outrageous, but even a number one pick, I mean, can you use Jimmy Garoppolo and what the Patriots did as sort of a, a, a gauge or, or an indication of, of what teams they're not willing to give up first round picks anymore. Garoppolo, they, they asked for a first and a fourth and it eventually took a second for them to finally make a move, but uh, nobody was going to give up a first and a fourth and Garoppolo was an established guy. Well, he's not established. I mean, he's only started seven games, and he's won all seven. So he's seven and zero from so from that standpoint, he's got the best winning percentage in NFL history. I'm not sure if that's deserving of the to be the highest paid player in the NFL of what he is. But I kind of mentioned Jimmy earlier in the week. He's got a higher ceiling than Nick Foles. He's regarded as a better prospect at the quarterback position. Uh, certainly than Nick Foles, a much higher ceiling. And you're right, he only 
uh, got a second round pick. He only generated a second round pick for the Patriots. Now, on top of that, you also had to realize you were going to have to pay him. So a, a team like San Francisco realizes not only is it going to be a second round pick, you're also going to have to pay him twenty five plus million dollars, which is what they ended up. So that enters into it. You don't have to pay Nick Foles that much, even though in a projected trade scenario, you would certainly want to do a rework deal. You would certainly get a significant raise, but it would be nowhere near uh, the 27, 28, I forget the exact number Jimmy got. It would be nowhere near that number. Uh, So all of that enters into it. But as I said, if you're able to get a first-round pick for Nick Foles, you, don't, you almost have to you have to do it. And Howie Roseman is smart enough to understand that. Yeah, um, I don't think you even blink. It's like, wait, yeah. what? Did, you don't even ask. Did you? What did you say? You you say done deal. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's almost yeah. immediate. Look, I get the people's. You know, it's one of those things where um, you have um, a, a dearth of talent at one position an embarrassment of riches sometimes it's called but you can't go on with an embarrassment of riches forever you have to look at ways to improve your team and you have to look at improving your team with Carson Wentz as your quarterback not with having two quarterbacks that's just a perfect world that we don't live in the Eagles uh, persevered this year without Wentz because of faults but they got to find ways in the future to be able to fix you know they're going to lose guys in free agency so how do you improve those areas you add more assets and to me it's not even a question i think it sounds like to you too john i'm not sure about you pete where you stand on trading well, polls if, no, the, if, the, I, I if just, the opportunity came up it, it has to be an, an opportunity i think that would knock them over and i think the biggest thing is that if you look at the trend and i've we've done some research here if you go back to 1970 only 31 quarterbacks have moved been moved in deals that included at least one first round draft pick, but you're talking 1970. You go through the 70s and the 80s, 17 of those trades took place. Then in the 90s, it was nine. There's just been five since 2000. The last time you had a quarterback involved with first round picks going back was in 09 when the Bears gave up two first round picks and a third round pick and Kyle Orton to get Jay Cutler. Now, was that a good trade, John? I mean, you, you sit there and you look at the Bears who got a starter for eight years, but then they also went 51 and 51. I mean, I don't know that the Eagles are going to get an offer that knock, knocks them over. No, and certainly uh, uh, Nick Foles, and this is going to upset some people, and I'm going to get Twitter. <laughs> I'm going to get killed for this. Nick Foles doesn't have Jay Cutler level talent. Uh, he just doesn't, especially at that stage uh, of Jay's career. I mean, you're, you're talking about a quarterback that has a significant, significant arm talent, uh, and he did – you know, changed the Bears, and they had some very good seasons. But he's always been an underachiever, uh, a bit of an enigma, not the best leader in the world. But from a physical standpoint, you know, as I said, throwing the football, Jay Cutler's as good as he gets uh, at, at that stage of his life. And, you know, people are enamored when they see that kind of talent. And you see it all over the NFL and potential uh, is often the word that gets coaches and general managers fired. Uh, but they'll see somebody with that kind of talent and say, well, I can coach him up. I can fix that. I can fix this. But you got to have that baseline of talent. Nick is an, is, is an above-average quarterback, I think, in this league. Uh, he's proven he can win at the highest level if you have significant parts around him. Um, so all of that is good. And, and I don't want to downplay what he did because, as I said, he was lights out against both the Vikings and the Patriots. Well, John, he deserves all the credit in the world. But if you're going to argue Nick Foles should be in, in, in a quarterback battle with Carson Wentz, you, you, are, you are basing that on emotion, not logic. It, it's, it's not close. You can't really make isn't. the argument that uh, Foles – his situation in Philly is much better for him than it will be someplace else. Oh, no question. And and you could argue a, a lot of that is gone now because I think, you know, John Filippo was a big part of that, maybe the biggest part of that, and he would have been gone anyway. Uh, and is gone anyway. You see a scenario where D, you, well. do you see a scenario where Filippo? they don't have a quarterback there. Do you see a scenario where Filippo? 
talks to his brass in Minnesota and says, you know, let's do it. We and maybe not even as the starter. Maybe they bring him in in a similar situation. No, for a couple of reasons. One, John has already spoken, and he's he's talked very highly that in today's game, he thinks to win consistently, you need a quarterback that has uh, at least functional mobility in the pocket uh, and his ability to extend plays. And, and while Nick did that well at times, that's not a strength of his game. That's number one. Uh, and number two, if you look at Minnesota, that's the same team that obviously traded for, for Sam Bradford and is probably embarrassed by that trade in the fact that they were on the cusp of the Super Bowl. The Eagles routed them. Uh, obviously, Howie Roseman got the 14th pick in the draft, which turned out to be Derek Barnett, who made a big play in that very game, uh, stripping the football. So I, I don't think Rick Spielman would want to go back into – sort of battle with Harry Roseman, give him another first-round pick for Nick Foles. I I just can't see that happening in, in a million right, let years. Let me ask you this, then. What is, like, the demarcation point of where you would say no? For, for Nick Foles? If I'm I, another team and I call you, John McMullen, in the role of Howie Roseman slash Joe Douglas, and I say, I will offer you – a third round pick. Do you do you consider it, or what's the part? Where is the, no, the mark where say you no. say it, absolutely it, it, not? It, it, absolutely not for a third round pick. You need at least a second round pick, and I think you know the the Bill Polians and and the Peter Kings of the world are actually helping the Eagles, uh, and I think there is the possibility that somebody could get in a desperate situation after the draft and perhaps they don't get the quarterback that they sort of had a, a focus on, and all of a sudden they might offer a future first-round pick. So I think that's what Howie's going to do. He's going to wait. He's going to do the same thing when he traded Sam. He's going to wait for a team that's desperate and to come calling and overpay. That's what he's looking for. That's what he wants. And the worst-case scenario is that you have a, a, the safety net you had this year which is not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, an embarrassment of riches. Uh, yeah, and he can do that for one more season. Uh, he's not going to be able to do it past then. So that, to me, is the bigger question. Uh, you kind of understand this is it. So, and, and as I've said multiple times, Nick Foles' value is never going to be higher than it is right now. So that's the decision you're weighing. Take advantage of that environment. Or, or keep the band back together, have the embarrassment of riches for one more year, try to go win a second Super Bowl, uh, that's really the question. So, John, you think it boils down to this? I mean, you've got backup and Super Bowl MVP, two terms that don't usually go together. And when they do, <laughs> it kind of means that one or the other is either faulty or a fluke. So if you say what Nick Foles did in the postseason wasn't a fluke, well, then he's not really a backup. I mean, this is kind of the, the quandary that people are out there. And if he is a backup, then can he re uh, duplicate his heroics? Well, I, I think he could duplicate it in another this type situation. I, I, if you're asking me, can Nick Foles start from week one and win the Super Bowl? No, he couldn't have done that this year. Uh, you know, people, it, I understand why you're on the high of winning the Super Bowl, but you also watch Nick Foles at the end of the regular season. You also watched him against the New York Giants, the Dallas Cowboys, the Oakland Raiders. You, you know, only one game was he even competent, and that was against the Giants. Uh, there is no way the Eagles are in the position they are if Carson Wentz doesn't do all the heavy lifting to put him in a position to get the top seed in the NFC. Uh, and if they don't have the top seed, I don't think Nick Foles goes on the road and beats Atlanta. I, I don't think he goes on the road and beats the Vikings. I really don't. So if you're asking me the question, can he start from week one and win the Eagles a Super Bowl or anybody else for that matter, the answer is no. Can he come in and, and be the closer and finish? He's already proven he can do that. All right, Johnny Max got more on the Eagles and the NFL right now at 97.3 ESPN.com. Follow him on Twitter at JF McMullen. His story on 
Alshon Jeffrey, uh, of course, who will uh, get shoulder surgery this offseason, and uh, Doug Peterson's comments this morning uh, regarding his quarterback situation in Philadelphia. It's all at 97.3 ESPN.com. Thanks, pal. Hey, thank you, guys.